254 TV. My name is Chris Maingi, just in case you're getting to join us. This is why we get to do great conversations, give you good music, and you know, tell you what's happening. And now, today, we have Strength of a Woman, a conversation that happens every other Wednesday where we get to edify and strengthen the woman. In this week's episode, I have Joyce Miner, who is a teacher who teaches autism uh, kids. And you know how we do it. She's here to tell us more about it. Karibu sana. Well, thank you so much. So I, I think you may be able to an intro, a carafe intro about yourself. You can yeah. probably tell us who is Joyce. All right. Um, good morning to our viewers. My name is Joyce Miner. Um, what I do is I teach learners with autism and that's what I've been doing um, since 20, 2020. Yes, I am a graduate from Kenyatta University. I pursued Bachelor of Education Special Needs um, and I specialized with emotional and behavior disorders. Yes, basically Yes, I'm a teacher and I love what I do. I'm also a Sunday school teacher where I come from in my church. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, women can do everything. So I am glad that you have invited me to this show. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank so you. So probably someone is seated somewhere thinking, what is autism? Okay. Autism, it's a um, developmental disorder, mostly in children. Um, there are characteristics of children with autism uh, most one of them is delayed speech uh, you can see that a child has taken uh, more than the required duration for them to start speaking uh, some ha are very hyper so they have attention deficit and they are very hyper they have hyperactivity um, also, they, you can see that they don't like to engage with the regular environment. They want to withdraw, and if it is playing, they just want to play on their own. They don't want to engage with other kids. Yes, I know with that description, you can, you can see there are some kids you have seen somewhere who have such characteristics. But yes, I help them, and I teach them, and I have great feedback from the kids that I've taught so far. Yes. Um. Just out of out of curiosity, mm -hmm. you see the way we say that um, anemia, sickle mm. cell, or we, I'm looking for another one, that is usually caused by mm. recess factors, oh, yeah. and you know, because parents, yeah. you know, of different blood groups. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that story, I, I, my biology is not that, <laughs> not that spot on, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Mm. So what causes autism? Can we relate it to probably um, the way we can say sequel cell or something? Um, not really, because uh, there's no proper way to say that, that autism is caused by something, because... Um, they are just uh, suggestions that that maybe if a mother was a drunkard when they were pregnant, but actually now in reality it is not necessarily the cause. So we c I cannot say. Maybe the research is still ongoing to see what the the real cause, but for now we don't have a real cause. But one thing I know is that. Um, Autistic children can be helped and they are able to live a normal life just like other children. Yes, it's just a developmental problem. When you are able to, to see it early and you start engaging and intervening in that child's life as early as possible, the child becomes better. Better, they become independent. They, are, they even go to regular schools and because they are very, what do I say, they are high functioning intelligence like they are very smart so if you you see it early and you you deal with those uh, symptoms early early enough as early as three years you're able to to help the child to become like a regular child yes so, so in short you can't you can't control autism like you uh, can't control and say i won't get married to someone when you're gonna hear blood group so that to see what to work on this this kind of disease or something uh, there are so many like uh, research outside there. Some say that it can also be genetic. It can be um, what do I call it? Like 
the way a person used to to behave when they were pregnant, but not necessarily, not necessarily, yes. Ooh. Actually, there are some people, even when they are grown-ups, um, they might, you may see a grown-up, but now it was not diagnosed early, but because now they have lived with regular people, they, no one ever noticed that they were autistic. I have um, an example, there's this person, he's a media personality, he's from the US. So he gave birth to a child uh, who is autistic. So the mother was like, ah, we need to know what's the root cause of all this. So they went, they did research, they did research, and later they realized that the dad was autistic and the dad didn't know. So yes, they, they can be genetic, yes, but not necessarily genetic, yes, no, so it's 100%. In the, in, the, in the area where I'm, um, it is very, how do I put it? In the areas that it is very advanced, mm -hmm. what, are the, what, are the if, what are the characteristics? Uh, one of the high, one of the, like you can just see, is they are very hyper. Hyper, like they cannot sit at such a setting. This is very uncomfortable. Yes, this quiet place, it's very uncomfortable. They want to, if it is the cameras, they want to touch and then jump on the chairs. They just want to be hyper, move, 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 move. Yes, and some can, uh, now because they have emotional uh, breakdown, they are called meltdowns. When they have such, they can even hit themselves on the floor or they want to hurt themselves, they want to like bite themselves or they want to hurt someone. Those are the, the extremes, yeah. Ooh. 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 Mm. Oh. How, how many like cases of extreme have you dealt with? Oh my God, they are, they are several, they are several, yes. <laughs> so, um, there's, this, there's this aspect of stigmatization, mm. especially when, when autism and other disorders are concerned, you know. Yeah. How do you handle that? I think uh, the, the issue of stigmatization is not necessarily even to the children, but also to the parents. When you see a child, you, you feel that they, were not, they are not well taught, the, the parents are not, they are negligent, because how can a child just be all over? And you're wondering, where is the mother? Where are the parents? So that mostly the parents go through that because they feel that no one understands them. Mostly the parents that I've dealt with because People just assume because they are child, you can tell them stop and they stop. But these ones, you have to just know how to tell them. You cannot just be firm and say stop, 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 and they will stop. They might even throw a tantrum just because you said stop. So you have to like just understand the parents and just allow them to handle the child the way they know best because that's the highest form of stigma. And I want to tell people that our parents who have kids with autism, they are doing their best. That one I can assure you 100% that they go out of their way. They even pay money, a lot of money by the way, so that their, parents, so that their kids can get help. And these kids also, uh, we say that the autism is a brain problem. So you cannot uh, speed or you cannot uh, make a child be who they are not, you get. So you have to be patient with them. So what happens is just, just if, if it is about learning, you can learn uh, on how to handle people with autism. And one of the things is just understand them. If, you f if they feel they are not comfortable in this room, just take them maybe outside, it's okay. It's okay, don't force them, because when you force them, their brain cannot comprehend that. Yes, so the issue of stigmatization, us, we need to of course, we are pushing it so hard that people will understand and people will know that these kids, their parents are doing their best and also their kids, they go through a lot, a lot. Uh, yes, so we just understand them, be patient with them and help where we can, yes. So how many children do you have in one class? Mm, in one class setting, it depends on the school. Uh, currently, I'm not working in a school. But in a, in a very good setting, maybe six children, six 
embembe a they are teacher and assistant and a caregiver. Yes, there are like three or four people needed to assist the children at, a, at one given time. Yes. TV. Thank you for staying tuned to Why in the Morning, where we're giving you great conversation, good vibes and great music. Before we went on that short, tiny little break, we were talking about autism with teacher Joyce. And you know she's giving us a lot of wisdom concerning the same. I think we left it at how many uh, kids are in a class. Mm. Probably we can retake that. Okay. Yeah. In a, in a class setting, uh, if they are, like, you should ensure that they are adults. Like, if there are maybe prob probably six children, there must be a teacher, a teaching assistant, and a caregiver, someone who is assisting with, yes, so assisting with the needs of the children at that particular moment. Yes. So at least three. Three people yes, for adults. six children. Yes. So that, that means, like, every person is handling two people? Yes. Or? Yes. Okay, why? because they have different needs. And um, just like uh, regular children, they also have personalities. There are some who are quiet, there are some who have stories and they want to share their stories. There are some, maybe they're still learning on how to talk. There are others who have developed speech. So you have to cater for all those needs. Yes, like according to their specific abilities, they need their own attention, yes. So let me ask, let me just ask. Yeah. Um, you see the way we have, um, in a normal school, we have kids in grade one, grade two, yeah. grade three, grade four, blah, 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 blah. So is it the same in autism where you have different classes for these kids or they're all put in one class together? Um, one thing is that these kids are really good, if, are really good in studies. Yes, so we start from, it's maybe the, it's a special needs unit. Uh, we start from the, P, the PPs to the, um, to the grades and then to the vocational and to the course they want to take. Yes. So do they study? It's just a regular thing. Okay. Yeah. So do they study the normal curriculum or they have their own curriculum? They do their, their own, uh, the, the regular curriculum, uh, maybe the CBC one. Yes, they are able to. How equipped are they to do CBC? I've seen those CBC things and they're quite something. <laughs> actually, it's, actually, for them it works because they love being engaged. They love being engaged, so that one really works. They want to know how to cook. They want to, to identify with the environment. So by the time they're getting there, they will have basics and they will be able to do what others are supposed to be doing at that particular level. Yes. Oh, okay, mm. okay, mix. They're actually very smart, very smart. I had a child, uh, I think he was three or four, and every time he would pass a place, he would cram what he have seen, like they have like a photo, photographic memory. They would, if it is that written there, Y254, imagine. They would go and now start saying Y254, I M A G I N E, like everything. Like they have that, and he'll spell word by word. No matter how long it is or how complex, they would still spell it. And they were just four. That's not regular for a four year old. They are really good. Yes. There's, there's this, um, okay, I don't know what to call it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should call it stigma. Mm. I don't know. I don't have good word for it yeah. but there's this aspect of people saying uh where w i don't know if i'm supposed to say that but for excuse my ignorance exactly. for lack of a better word when i was emo mm. do, do, what is what is because i think people don't understand what this is and what madness is mm. do you mind probably elaborating okay yeah yeah, people may term them as that, but they are not mad. It's just, um, it depends. Because uh, I've seen kids when with, the, with the right, I think uh, in the back days, people didn't know that there, there are ways you can intervene and change their, their lives, you get. 
But nowadays, there are ways you can intervene as early as three, and you can identify what works for them, and then that's what you offer to them. What works for them is what you offer to them, and they will be really regular. That when there was him, it is not really when there was him, they are really normal. Normal. It's just um, their temperaments are not like ours. You are able to control how you feel, but for them, Sometimes the brain just can't, like, this one is too much. They don't even know how to bring it out. Like, you see the way, like, a two-year-old is trying to, to learn this life. Now they were a baby, now they are trying to get, uh, to adjust into their new environment. Sometimes they just throw a tantrum, and it's okay. These people just get to a point that they cannot identify with what is happening, and to them it's a lot of pressure. Mm. To them they feel it is like their world is crashing. So for you, it's just uh, see that they are suffering and they need help. So if you're able to assist, the better. Because it is not like they, they need you to, to do something out of this world. If they feel that a place is noisy, just take them to a place that is quiet. If they feel that place is too crowded, just take them to a place where they can be able to, to deal with it. It's just dealing, knowing how to deal with it they are just okay, yes. So for how long will this dealing with it uh, take? Lifetime? Uh, not really. A few years? What happens, even when you're raising a regular child, you, you teach them. Yes, uh, as from church, we know that the Bible says that when you teach a child in the ways of God, they will never depart from mm -hmm. it. Everything that you teach a child, just they are just they are, they are d developing, you get. Mm. As they develop, whatever you present to them, that's what they take. If you present to them that this, this is how I deal with uh, this kind of emotion breakdown, that's how they are going to adjust. And they are really good in learning. Because if, if every time they see, maybe they are not comfortable with the lights, and they see that every time they are in a place that they are, it's full of lights, you tell them to leave, Every time that they are in that setting and they feel that the lights are too much, they'll just move. They'll just walk to a place that they feel it is not that triggering. So, yes, like when you teach them and they love routine. So if you keep on doing something for a while, they take it. And they will actually, naturally, that's what they take. It's not, it's not, it's not for a long time. Yes. Mm, yeah. Nice. So how, if you're to describe, how has your experience been... Um, dealing with families of autism children? Uh, when I'm dealing with families with children with autism, my first, um, my heart fell, my heart goes to the parents, first of all, before the kids, because I feel the parents go through a lot, a lot. They have to raise money. Most of these kids may have a diet because that if a child is hyper, they're supposed to eat things that are not sugary, things that, are, that do not trigger their, their hyperactiveness. So uh, I go to, I, my heart goes to the parents. They, they spend a lot of money. They also need a lot of emotional guidance on how to handle themselves in dealing with these children. So parents really need a lot of support, a lot of support. To the children, if the, if the parents are okay, I feel the children are in good hands. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice. Wow. Nice. <laughs> hey, grace to you. <laughs> there's, um, there's, um, there's this aspect a while back, mm -hmm. especially during the autism awareness period, yeah. there was a while back that um, there was great outcry and campaign actually against parents who hide their children. How is the situation now? Uh, I can't say that it is completely dealt with. Yeah, some parents still uh, hide. Yeah, lack of a better word, that they don't want uh, their kids to be out there because they are fearing how people will take it. So, yes, yeah, still, still we, are, we, we have a long way to go, but I feel we have, we have, we have moved a, a step higher. So we are doing well, 
but just to encourage any parents any parent who is watching today and they have a child who is autistic that's not the end of their their life yes their life still continues and they have a great future the, a child the bible says that the, the children are a blessing yes in Psalms it says that they are a gift from god it doesn't say that, that some children it says all children so that's a gift we have from god you just know how to handle that gift and make that gift the best they can be don't hide them they are channels they are the government is really doing well there are institutions that are helping kids with autism they are just bring your child they will be helped just just tell someone there are even groups in their social medias you cannot lack somewhere you can get help nowadays information is out here mm. just just engage with the information and you need and you get the help you need yes so you don't you nowadays you don't go um it's not as bad as um kitambo how you used to go back door to door to no kids. no nowadays not really mostly in nairobi because i am now mm. based in nairobi uh, i feel people have really brought their kids out yes mm. yeah have you what's the most challenging behavior you've had to handle in a class <laughs> i think the the most challenging one is just a child wanting to explore if they they just want to jump out and and run away that's really and they will run fast <laughs> oh so before you catch up with them you'll be very tired and you don't know where they are going and now when they they see that you're chasing them they don't they, they can just do anything you know now they are not in their right state of mind they can they can just hurt themselves or, you know you when you're running without knowing where you're going anything can happen so that really that really scares someone because you're like what where are they going yes Will they there was a, a case <laughs> a child wanted to run away and we didn't know they want to run out of the school where are they going there are cars there are roads so you have to be really careful and have the right measures to ensure that they are no matter like any you you are able to see any extreme and be able to curb it before something happens yes so are they are they able to get into careers like professional careers in the oh, yes. in the future oh yes yes they are and they're able to perform yes oh and they get married oh yes <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking i'm asking because probably it's it's uh, we don't do this show for mm. ourselves alone yeah someone is seated at the at home I thinking I have known of autism but I've never known if these people can have careers I've never known if these people could get married mm. I have never you know yeah. so at times it goes beyond just us having a conversation yeah. and it's it's quite it's quite something it's quite yeah. something these kids can 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 if they love something because now you'll you'll see if they are into computers you'll see it as early as possible and they pursue it with all of it like can or everything that they have they pursue what they love if they love football they will pursue it if they love tech they will pursue it so what happens is when you guide them in that way they will be the best very best they are geniuses most of them like whatever they choose to do they are they are extremely productive in that area so yes they they will they will perform because now by the time they are getting to that age they they have they have gone through di uh, different developmental stages they are able to handle their emotions or there's someone maybe who is assisting them in case of anything so it's not of a big deal when they are grown ups and now if they get married there's a, there's someone who under of course by the time you are agreeing to get married to someone who who has that background you know what you're getting into mm. so you assist them in the best way possible and any support yes so actually they are so good they are they are really awesome people so, so what what will do encourage if um if a parent or guardian sees a talent mm. they should push it just pursue it that's that's their breakthrough that's their breakthrough just pursue it don't 
just do anything that it takes because nowadays when you just pursue something god just opens doors just somehow god will just open doors open doors and your child will, will be will be assisted uh, one thing i think i should i should mention is anytime you find any child whether they are regular or they they are with special needs just show them that you love them don't don't even if you feel that their behavior is not the best don't don't give them that face of what are you doing just try to get their level and understand them any child sees someone who loves them and they take that if you show a child that you don't love them they are going to repel you they are going to actually mm -hmm. they can even misbehave because they are, they see this one they cannot they can never understand me so even children with autism they love being loved and they they will just get to to love you if you show them that you love them they love you unconditionally like <laughs> it is like a, a a lifetime attachment so the best thing is just show them love that's the least you can give to them and that will help them in a, in their life very greatly yes does it take them long to learn um, speech therapy and etc etc? Um, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. But what I, I advise most of my of, of the parents is the early the better. Yes, the earlier the better because at at two, three, four, the brain is still developing. So how how you condition that brain? To function is how that kid will be so if you teach the brain that it is okay they can learn how to talk as early as possible just d do intervention early they are able to learn ASAP like very quickly mm. yes nice, nice yeah so moving away from autism what mm. else do you do you as a person <laughs> no? I think my, my life mostly revolves around teaching children with autism I also do business, yes, mm -hmm. I'm a business person. I sell beddings, yes, so you, if you need bed sheets, like pillowcases, that's what I, I do. Yeah, um, and I also teach children in church, yes. Amazing, so yeah. how, d how, how does your normal day look like? Wow, <laughs> my normal day looks like um, waking up early, Yes, doing my devotions. If I, if I have a client, nowadays I'm working with clients who need me to assist them, I go, I, I help those children. Like it's a, it's a full-time job and then my business is I do them during the weekends, yes. Yeah. So you're able to balance a bit of yes, everything. Yes, I'm able to. You you have to, <laughs> you have to <laughs> balance, because in every in every area you're needed. Yes, and we are the people to give solutions. So anywhere you're needed, your inputs, you'll be there full full force. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. I think we are almost bringing this conversation to an end. Yeah. And I'd want you to. I don't know, I'm, I'm torn in between uh, asking you cheek questions. We, we <laughs> usually have to, to cheek questions. Or asking you to give us a parting shot, then we do the cheek question. I'm not sure what I, <laughs> I'm not sure what I want to do. But I'll probably ask you to give us a parting shot first. Okay. Using that camera. Okay. Yes. It's been great. It's been amazing. Um, it's a, like a call out to everyone who is watching us just to ensure that our children have the right environment for them to grow, whether they are regular, whether they have disability, let's help them because we are, we are the society. We are the society now, we are the community that helps those who are coming after us to be the best that they can. And when we make them, if we make this world a better place for them, they are going to have the best life in their future and they're also going to model that to those who will come after them. So yes, it is just making life better for whoever is around you and whoever comes after you. It's been great, yes, being in this show. I feel that I have been able to put out there the need to help our children because as we are already adults, 
the people who are after us, they are the children, and we have to ensure that they have the best life, and we have to ensure that they, they get the best resources, help if they need help. Just offer something to them because you have it. Yes, thank you so much, and God bless you. So, what can't you leave the house without as a girl? <laughs> I think I live bum. Um, to, um, on the road, are you a, 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 are you a cheater? Or <laughs> to a trace. I think I'm a cheater. I really walk fast. He also flashes. He is any day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, makeup, no makeup. Um, I don't know. Makeup, but not uh, extreme. <laughs> <laughs> not us. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not you. I love makeup, but on a, on a regular day, I'll just do a touch up and I'm done. Yes. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Uh, scattered treasures. Wow. <laughs> I think I really love dresses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for making time. Thank for you coming, so much for having for me. Yes. You're welcome for yeah. sharing your knowledge on autism. Mm. We've learned a thing or two. Mm. Would you want us to tell? Do you, would you want to tell us your social media handles? Uh, yeah, okay. yes. Um, uh, on Instagram, I am at Joy Joyous, the same as Facebook. Yes, and if anyone wants to reach me, I can also give out my phone number. Yes, it's a, it's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So my phone number is uh, zero seven zero seven six two one eight four four zero seven zero seven six two one. Eight four four. Yes, thank you. Eh, nam si reach out kwa vitu zenye azusiani na autism, please. For anyone who needs help, mostly with their children. Me, me so pera na buski ya tuwa zokseva. Nili kwa nuko kwa TV. Are you single? On a light note, though. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming again. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. Yes, thank you. And that was Joyce Maina, who is a teacher dealing with autism learners, and she's been giving us a whole lot of insights towards what is autism, who are autism learners, can they live a normal life, can they do normal things. And you know, one thing I have loved about what she has said is that these people are very normal, like they just have different abilities from your ability and that doesn't make them any lesser of a person. Mm. So when you see someone out there with autism or struggling with any other um, disability, please show them love and care. They yeah. need it. But do not touch that dial. Val is coming back with more. That was the strength of a woman.